Hi, everyone. I am so incredibly happy to be here with my most special mentor, Shannon Port, who I have was thinking about it, have now been, we've been connected for, I think, 10 years. <laughs> it's amazing. It's just so amazing because I started Elevated Woman seven years ago and we had been working together for three years prior to that. And I just can't believe that much time has passed. Um, and I want to just say for anyone who is here for the first time or those who have been following me for a long time, if you have been following me for a long time, you have heard of Shannon Port. And if you're newer, I really attribute everything that I teach in Elevated Woman to the, the roots have come from what I've learned from Shannon. So to have her here and to collaborate with her in any way is such a high honor. And I highly recommend connecting with her personally if what we speak about today resonates with you and just calls you. Um, so with that being said, I wanna welcome you and also have you sort of introduce um, what we came together to talk about today. Okay, hi everyone, it's Shannon Port. And I have to say that it's, it is the greatest privilege to, first of all, as Anya said, to have known Anya for 10 years now. I feel teary about that. <laughs> and to have watched her just grow into the most beautiful, beautiful, mature, and yet also radiant, youthful young woman with the most amazing business and platform for teaching what Anya and I both call the divine feminine wisdom. And so I have had the absolute joy of knowing Anya since she was in college and just watching her through these years and, and also maintaining a really special friendship. So it's, and her and I haven't done a video together in, I just noticed three and a half years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and we just connected a couple nights ago and spent about three and a half hours on the phone, just really talking about what is, what we both see happening on the planet right now. Um, so if you don't know who I am, I, lately I've been introducing myself as a divine feminine astrologer because I also work with the archetypes and the archetypal awakening through the zodiac, which is centered around the awakening of the what I sometimes call the feminine Christ or the solar feminine, the nucleus in the feminine vibration by healing the archetypes. And Anya works, you'll be familiar with that because Anya works with archetypes as well. And also I've been saying teacher of the feminine mysteries because mm -hmm. the spiritual mysteries that I work with and that are we're really focusing on right now with some esoteric feminine codes are about the specifically the feminine path of spiritual awakening and um, opening at this time on the planet to really, really be the complement to some of the masculine paths that are really highly developed. And so um, Ani and I are here today to talk about what the, the frequencies that we're seeing on the planet right now and to talk about how there has been, how there's also a spiritual shift happening with women of all ages, moving, having more and more the desire to move away from the cultural programming and what has just become kind of a, a de degenerated false kind of liberation that's been really a deception that's been sold to women. And I, I, that sounds heavy, but it's, it's a kind of liberation that actually has created more energetic bondage for young women. And it's really, really heavy on the planet right now, but there's also this move towards women and, and a lot of younger women understanding that their platform has almost been pulled out from underneath them. It's almost mm -hmm. like that stability 
at the same time, Ani and I both honor the the true liberation that's happened for the feminine, just in being able to reclaim our voice, the mm-hmm. sovereignty of our voice, to speak the truth in the world. And what Anya and I were just speaking about before we came on was that there to, to really have sovereignty of the feminine voice and the divine feminine voice, not to be owned mm-hmm. by a political party. And at times, even a religion, meaning there will be times when the feminine has to speak what she carries within her so that she truly can speak to the awakening that's happening on the planet right now. And so did that, did it, did that? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So beautiful. And when we first spoke about what we were, um, and Shannon will talk a little bit more about this in a a bit, but um, you said the path of the holy woman and what I what I felt when I heard those words is um yeah our conversation a couple nights ago was so deep and powerful just in recognition of you know when I work with clients like where the women that are in my world um where they're at right now what what I see is one of the main struggles is there's this intense conditioning and programming that's been happening for many years. Um, when I, you know, I think back to probably about seven years ago when I was just starting my business and it was when social media and, um, the influencer world was just, it had already started, but it was really beginning to build up, I think some momentum. And, um, one of those early, signs and the and one of the early um representations of this liberation that Shannon and I actually had some pretty personal deep talks around is is just the normalization of the fem- seeing the female body on social media and how it got so popular to you know post pictures of yourself like pretty exposed um And I'm using that as an example because it's specific to what we're talking about in a, in a more holistic way here. It's just one specific example of, you know, this, this freedom of self-expression and um, sharing our creativity and our beauty. That's, that's what we are fed, you know, that message of, well, this is about our freedom to share ourselves and however we want. So it sounds great on the surface, But that sort of expression became normalized without recognizing that there were also some harmful um, results that came out of it. And another example is, you know, just the culture of casual dating, casual intercourse, (laughs) Um, all these things that if we look out into the landscape of relationships, dating, romantic partnerships, what I know from what my clients are experiencing and just what I see out there and, and my own, you know, history in that space as well is there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of dynamics that are fairly messed up (laughs) and making it really challenging to experience divine love and um, you know, the coming together of masculine and feminine, um, in a way that we were really designed to as holy women. Um, so I would love to, um, I have more to say, but I'm going to just toss it back to you, Shannon, um, because that's what this talk today is about is, you know, I, I think I'll just seed this in right now, but what I know for the women that are going to resonate with this call the most is we actually do have the discernment to stay connected to that holy path but um the pull and that those those darker forces are very real (laughs) so I'm that's what I want to just at least talk about for sure in this talk is is um you know what it takes to actually stay on that path and fight against some of that programming that's so strong and how to recognize it Thank you. That the the way you said all of that is so deep. And you 
obviously you you're around a lot of women and you also are really really aware have a really heightened awareness and even gifts in this work really special gifts and so to be able to hear it from you where you're at and in your life and at your age and you've really your generation millennials are really the first generation i see the millennials being hit they're being hit they they were the first to really get hit but yet they're also kind of the first that's having this revival of, of finding spirituality. And yours started with finding divine feminine spirituality. Mm -hmm. And then we're also discovering what works in other places too. I mean, there's a kind of structure in the masculine as well that's also been very supportive. Mm -hmm. So what you are talking about, Anya, with the um with social media and and with the quick access, especially with the female body um, being revealed to money, to a kind of quick fame, and to a kind of power. And so all at once with all of these um, new platforms, we know that what looks beautiful and what's revealing, it sells. And so it's a, it's kind of a, a, a really amplified this was new to be able to have access to that kind of fame, power, and money mm -hmm. so quickly. And so because the feminine is a multiplier, woman is the multiplier. She multiple women, feminine energy multiplies, it gives birth. And so women took to it really quickly. And it's a it's it's an amazing thing that women could be in the world and build these platforms. And yet there is a there is a price now we're realizing seven years later that there's a price to be paid and we're seeing a very real physical energetic depletion of what i refer to as the feminine energy body or mm. the vital energy the spiritual forces that surround the female body and so if we think of the heart as the altar and the mantle that holds this deep, deep potency. And so that really gives a woman such a woman represents woman is the archetype of the heart. And so the woman in her embodiment represents the actual living personification of the heart. And so the heart works through love, but it also works through desire and lust, which is what I refer to as the shadow side of Venus. And mm -hmm. Venus is the heart in the archetypes. And so what has happened is this, this culture of fame and consuming, but also revealing. So you know this because we work with energy and frequency. When I put my image, the image is divine, the divine image of woman, the holy woman, and the holy woman has a whole spectrum. But when I give my image to the world, I'm giving a piece of my own feminine energy and I'm putting it up to be consumed by what, whichever audience I'm tuned into, the masses. And so what we are really seeing, and there's an energetic, there's a, there's a reciprocal relationship. When I put myself out there, energy comes towards me in the unseen world these are very real forces they in all religion we hear about the interdimensional forces or the unseen world where there's a battle between the angels and the demons which are the archetypes but they can be expressed in many ways so those energetic forces come in the unseen world which is the subconscious realm which is the feminine realm so women in our polarity, in our physical body, with our womb, with our breasts, with our heart, with we, there is a very real different energetic auric field to a female. Mm -hmm. And that auric field holds tremendous gifts. But that auric field of woman is also deeply connected to the unseen world because it's the polarity of the inner world and the dark world, the moon. And so that's why sometimes we talk about, you know, Eve and Lilith. I've been working with a lot with Eve and Lilith, that the moon realm, which is the subconscious realm, women are so tuned into it. So these forces, to bring it back to the body and these attractive forces, 
they affect us in our subconscious mind and in our sleep and they drive us. And so when we attract too many forces like that, it can make us crazy. There's that mm -hmm. archetype of the crazy, meaning because what happens, there's a literal degeneration and desecration of the feminine energy, which we call the vital energy. It's the holy energy. There's the energy um, in Light Body Woman, we work a lot with the body of desire and the body of purity. So the vital body is purity. It's mm -hmm. the Eve energy or the high priestess energy like you. And so, and that's, that's your, your, so you have such a connection, but I love that you're wearing red and black today because it's got your, it's got your Inanna side. So that energy, we have a supply of it in our field and it's not infinite until we have regenerated. And so it's, it's part of our aura, but even more subtle than that, we take a hit. We, we take an attack. So that saying, selling your soul, but really selling your body, what happens is we get this amplified power, this sort of like worldly power that feels really good. It's the hit of fame, money, um, power, because it feels powerful to have success. You see all the women, like the OnlyFans women and all that whole new, that whole new platform that is it's bigger. I just read recently, it's bigger than Amazon, the amount of hits that it gets. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. And it's anyway, it's very That's the power of the woman that it's is the all, all that, all that, all those hits are to consume the feminine, that to is. consume the feminine. And although there's men on it too, but it, mm -hmm. the female is the gold. It's, it's the feminine energy that, that magnetizes and that draws it in. And so if you can get a platform like that with a lot of women, a lot of flesh and a lot of, um, um, you know, liberated lust energy. So we, and I know you and I will talk more about this later. So we, ca I call it lust frequency being the opposite of what you and I talked about a couple nights mm -hmm. ago, the divine feminine frequency, which Ani and I both work with. Lust frequency is the absolute inversion of that, mm -hmm. meaning it's just carnal and it's it's absent of initiation and it's absent of true feminine power. I'll stop there. Let me see if there's anything. So I just wanted to really say there is a physical hit and a psychological hit because the subconscious entities come in and it's like once we open ourselves to that as we just said, it, there's a, a, a first, there's a growing of, it's like when you see the movie star that comes up and she's like, just mm -hmm. the it person. And then in like this, the pop star that we were talking about, like they come in and then you watch the fall and the falls are happening faster and faster. Mm -hmm. Meaning like it used to take years for someone to be in that world and then kind of have a mental health crisis. They're happening. Now it's happening so quick. Because it's the the kind of um, global mm -hmm. saturation is so high. And so it's a woman's really sacrificing herself. It's truly, it's a crucifixion for the wrong reason, unless you regenerate. I'm going to stop and, and mm. have you keep going because I'd oh, love Oh, I have a couple things. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so... I had to write it with just a note so I don't forget. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so I'm writing notes too. <laughs> the whole time you were talking. <laughs> well, there's a something on OnlyFans and really quick though, going back, going to what you just said of how quickly that fall is happening. And maybe you can explain this, but I just it hit me as you were talking that I wonder if the reason it's happening so fast is the consumption of that energy is happening so quickly because more eyes, you know, now one video is posted of let's say this you know new pop star and millions of people see it and consume it and so i just wonder metaphysically if that is speeding up the process because the consumption of energy i mean you know whereas before it would take a long time for yeah. that and maybe i'm just kind of like making that up but no it's rapid it's accelerated with technology so just to say yes yeah so it's just like it's like the source 
Oh gosh. And, and we, I mean, Shannon is such a powerful person to, to learn from when it comes to, um, our core feminine wounds, the collective feminine wounds. I, I, I learned that term from her that, you know, one of the, um, collective feminine wounds that we've talked a lot about is just the sorry I'm just saying it is stunning sometimes how intense I you know I feel the the energy but um so that consumption I'm just thinking of these pop stars that rise up and their energy gets consumed really quickly but that same consumption is sim symbolically expressed in our ancient history when like these little girls were married to the king and you know their energy their sexual energy was consumed 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 do you want to tell that story? You tell it so well. I just told it in a recent video about yeah. the emperor's consorts. Yeah. Whenever. I mean, Ugh. just because we'll get into that. That's where we're, we're yeah. going to go there a bit. Yeah. You and you brought it into an, another story that, um, you know, goes really well with that. But yeah, I'll tell this really quickly. So I, it was a long time ago. I think I was, um, it was when I was in my very first relationship that was the big it was a big one it was my first big heartbreak deep you know spiritual experience in love and <clears throat> at that time my my boyfriend <laughs> um he had a, a woman in his life his ex-girlfriend um who he really was committed to continuing to have a relationship with in some some way shape or form <laughs> And it wasn't a sexual relationship, but it was an emotional, you know, deep connection. And, and at that time, I, I was, I very much loved him. Um, and I was attached and I wanted it to, you know, go a certain way, but <clears throat> I was working with Shannon and, and at that time in my journey, I <clears throat> would, I had to fight in my internal world and in my own heart, mind, um, because that what the dynamic that was happening with him and this other woman was not right for my spiritual body and my heart. Um, but I did not know how to trust myself. And that's that spiritual knowledge and attunement um, to the whole, whole be a holy woman, really, which is ultimately we don't, you, it's not putting ourselves in situations that hurt our hearts and our bodies and I was and it hurt me and I didn't know how to trust myself to walk away from that so I was this is a, I'm going into like story mode but I was working with love it sure. it's so <laughs> so clear the door was up he left the door open with her and you yes. felt it I felt it I felt it's it. an I energetic felt. door and the woman feels it for very powerful reasons though Yes. I remember I was, I learned from you about that, like, like that chamber of love that ultimately we have, it has to be sound and, and safe for the healing to happen through love. And when there's a, when there's a door open that. And for the esoteric, uh, like gifts to come in, like for them to land, it's like, if you landed in a place that's not safe, the woman takes the hit, the man yeah. does too, but the woman, her heart, which is the greatest jewel of the cosmos is not honored. And it, it's so, I know we're going to get more to that, but it's a, it's big. It applies. It's like the love comes in and it's meant to build in potency, but it's drained. And I mean, that's what it feels in my own body. That's what it feels like at least. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you can, you know, all the wisdom. <laughs> you're sacrificed. You're actually, because you're like, we we've talked and I've heard you say it too you and and the female in love has a certain substance that's unique to the female heart and you supply that substance to the masculine and if you're giving that substance in intimacy and in a very a, a, a relationship that you've decided to give on that level and then it's not honored and so there it's a two-way thing the woman comes into the kind of wisdom and maturity to understand what her part in that to make sure it's a, a sound connection. And of course, there's there's the lessons we have to learn that that send us these these holy relationships to help us get to that place. But then 
the man, um, he was receiving it. And we, we live in a world where the male is uplifted by the feminine energy mm. all over the world. The female energy is what catapults the man to fame and to wealth mm -hmm. and to success in the world because it's, and so in that love and adoration, but when it's intimate, like when you've really given and it's not honored, you, you just take hits. You know that you take hits. The subconscious mind, as we just spoke of, knows everything. And so that's why in, even in a relationship, if there's cheating, if the doors open, the woman has to process it. Even if she doesn't know what it is, it's happening inside her it's in the outer world, but it's being mirrored in her subconscious mind. And so that's how women would go crazy yeah. and end oh. up being beheaded. That's the, yes. the or because, put that thing gets put yes. on their face. Oh and my gosh. I want you to talk about that in a minute, but sorry. <laughs> so much. So really quick to, sh to finish the story. I was working with this acupuncturist and she was working on my liver and she told me the story of, of, the kings and the and the, these concubines, or I don't know. Um, um, at that time, she, I, I, she, it was, it was in. She was telling me of the story in China with the emperor and. Yeah, know, it's that I think they called them consorts, but they're like concubines. But the yeah. consorts, I think, was like the more glamorous. It, yeah, that makes sense. The yeah. pretend <laughs> title. The, yeah, call girl, the call girl instead of the prostitute or the yeah well and, and they were forced into it they weren't on the streets they were forced into it in, in the castle right and in the and so and they they had to live there and basically uh, offer a supply of sexual their sexual feminine energy to the king at whatever you know however his whatever he wanted at any time. And she said that they would die and they would like do these, um, somehow they were able to figure out how these women died and it was of complications of the liver. And um, I remember, this was so long ago, but she, and she said the complication of the liver, Chinese medicine was um, directly connected to the emotional body essentially and, and the heartbreak of that experience and I, I wish I could remember her exact words and it's in other videos but Shannon knows the story on such a deep metaphysical level um well I don't know if that's the right word to say but you know this even deeper than I um and I haven't shared that story for a long time but it it was so powerful at that time when I was in the situation because it as I was making my own myself wrong trying to heal the part of me that was uncomfortable with the situation that I was in, in love and this other woman. And, you know, I was trying to heal myself and work on my triggers so that I could be okay with this situation when the entire time that messaging of the body was saying, this is not our holy path. And again, that is, if there's, if there's a one beautiful thing you can take away, hopefully from this video, and there'll be so much, but is at least in my own path in the last three to five years, especially, well, actually since then, you know, since working with Shannon, so 10 years ago, it's been such a long journey of learning to trust the wisdom of, of the, the feminine, I think, uh, yeah. of the body, the energetic body, the heart. And the emotions, when your emotions are attached to your truth and wisdom too, they can be wounded as well. Mm -hmm. And from, you know, old patterns, but like you said, they're, they're attached to your heart and that feeling force that, especially in love, it's so profound. Um, the liver. Yeah. And I think I said it, I said it differently than you. I, how it's attached to the heart. The, um, I, I, I'm not sure if I read this or if it just came in, but that it's, it's an internalized rage. I know the liver is connected to anger and rage. And so mm -hmm. that suppression yeah of the null of the expression of love and of the being honored, just being used for your flesh, getting the honor of saying I was chosen because I found when I read on this, mm -hmm. I found this blog post in, from China, it was talking about how the process of choosing these women was really serious. It was like becoming Miss, a Miss Universe, meaning wow. they, they looked at every bit of their body. They listened to the sound of their voice. They wanted to know that they were mentally intelligent and that they um, were not ill or didn't have any defects. 
as young girls and then they were taken and then they were you so it was kind of like you got the status of being the chosen and the most beautiful only to just be the body for some one else's pleasure and it's a false kind of pleasure so that internalized rage is a collective trauma right now yeah. and i even see like the the backlash with like going so far towards only fans i first of all i don't see it as liberation of the feminine how it's sold everywhere now on these podcasts i see it as the backlash of if you can't have it just join them do you know what i mean it's like if yeah. i am not able to and it's also just spiritual ignorance not understanding the true power of your feminine energy in your body which is what anya by the way if any people from my platform see this is just an amazing teacher of feminine energy of she's put together archetypes she teaches she teaches the femi divine feminine frequency in a really special way so please keep going <laughs> oh my gosh i just i'm just so grateful to have this conversation with you right now and know that this is going to be shared because oh it's just just so powerful um okay so i'm going to share the what came in about the only only fans earlier today i think i was thinking about our call and for some reason it, it dropped in um I was thinking about only only fans and I thought to myself that I, I I think that these young girls, you know, back when we were 12, 13, 14, there was some um there was what's the word when you're influenced by your peers, the peer pressure. <laughs> um, but I had I I I almost just felt them there's the girls who it's so normalized to have an OnlyFans account. And I don't know where this happened. I just, I don't know for this for sure, but I really believe, I think that this is true, that that's the kind of peer pressure that's happening. And it's, but it's not even, doesn't even seem super pressurized because it's just normalized. Yeah. And that, and I, again, I don't have the proof of that, but I, it came in spiritually that somewhere it's whatever age in some, you know, little circles, um, of these young women, that kind of influence is happening. And um, the pressure is like, also there's a kind of de depressed, de the, the crisis with like young women being depressed now and young women, it, I mean, there's real depression with children and with adolescents and with women coming of age. I mean, we see it with all the confusion, you know, the sexual confusion and they, um, it, it's kind of like, they get like we talked about the fame or the money, you know, the, and the power is that it's kind of a a, a way to kind of like set, put, push down that depression and just kind of start running that course of living that life, the, you know, the fast life. And also, I just wanted to say that I, I also in my work and even with the work I do astrologically in the blueprint is that we do have different paths and mm -hmm. some women will come in with a path to go into the underworld and come mm -hmm. up out of it. And mm -hmm. oftentimes women that are really attracted to the divine feminine wisdom carry that archetype. And even in, in my work, I sometimes I connect it with the Magdalene archetype as well. Mm -hmm. And Magdalene was called the prostitute even by the church for a long time, whether she was or not is not even as important as her archetype of being the woman that came in and then goes through the alchemy because she holds that archetype. Mm -hmm. You're wearing her colors right now. I love oh, it. I well, love it. The room. Crazy. She was. She was. She was. She had like the demonic. Um, she carried it exactly, yeah. and she carried it like that's I what. So them. so so it's not to say that I want to just be clear in this work. It's not about saying that everybody should. We should go back to the old ways of this. We wipe this out. Everyone has to go to purity school and learn how to just be pure virgin high priestesses because wow. there's p meaning. There's a there's a danger in that as well. I mean, wow. it has to come from wisdom. Mm -hmm. So and when the older women are able to pass it down, when mothers are able to pass it down to their daughters and sons and in the womb, which yeah. is something we talk a lot and I've been talking a lot about in some of the videos I just did, then there will be a natural culture of wisdom starting to grow. So it's never about like, for me personally, stomping it out and condemning all these women as the as the ones who are 
who are destroying the planet or the even the feminine because the holy woman is also the woman who's claimed her own path mm. and not been so shamed from going through it that she's not able to see the truth of who she really is. Yeah. And I think there's going to be more and more. And I think that's why our work is so powerful. There's more and more women are going, women are going to be waking up and running. They're running right now to religions. And that's wonderful in certain ways to find groups that will support them and saying, I don't want that life anymore. But there's also the feminine wisdom, which is going to be just a real um, regeneration. Yes. Wow. So powerful. And that, that reminds me of, of a lot of what I've learned from my other main mentor, Diana, um, who I know you, you hear me talk about all the time too, but just it's, you know, what, from my own personal experience, um, I think that I have had some of that. I've had to have some dissent in my own personal journey. Absolutely. And experience the hard way exposing my body on social media and not like all the way or anything, but like, you know, just share, just those programs being susceptible to that influence and then having to go through it in my own life and ultimately step out of it and learn, look back and, and having gone through the pain body of those experiences and making those choices, um, find the wisdom in it. Um, but I will say that I mean, and you say this all the time, you know, we wouldn't trade the wisdom for anything. It's it's like being able to go through those experiences. And I think about, I think about, I love how you just said that a holy woman is someone who chooses and claims her path because it, that is, sometimes it feels like the hardest part. It's so, it's so scary and, and confronting, um, to activate that discernment and trust that discernment of, I don't know if, if what I'm saying is making sense, but. It is. And the, and the pull's getting harder with technology. We, I've been talking a lot with my people about the subconscious pull, how technology is now able to penetrate the feminine dimension, where our most sacred feminine energy is. It always has been. There's always been, that's culture too. It's, I want to be clear that it's also just part of being in on the earth. We've yeah. come here to drink and taste the different experiences to learn and to, and to, and to gain that wisdom. Like you said, that dig to go into it and come out. That's the path of that. That's actually the path of what I'm teaching in the next eight week course. It's yeah. the descent and the rise to really, and it takes those women who haven't gone. It makes the teacher, the divine feminine teacher, the one who knows the darkness, who has had to be sacrificed, or that's why part of the upcoming course I have is called feminine crucifixion, because you do your sacrifice but you find it inside and it and it comes, you come back as a real teacher because you can speak to it, you know it. And that's why you were always like my my student, my like <laughs> my best, meaning because you you carry it. You carry mm -hmm. it. There's certain women carry it and yeah. you know it. And it's deep, deep inner suffering, but there's also such a power. You said something else. Um, oh, fine, oh, about. Yeah, teenagers now, and I know you're a generation below me. And so, and I remember when we first met, you told me about what you were around. You were all, it was already amping up when you were in high school. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, I'll, you, I'm sorry. I hope you can continue on what you were saying. I can, yeah. No, okay. You, okay. You, okay. Why don't you go ahead? And, I'm just like, anytime you want to speak, I'm, it's, this is, yes, <laughs> please. <laughs> Oh, I think you, you, why don't you go finish what you, or continue with what you're okay. saying? And then we'll, because I know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, um, yeah, like I think with the owning of the path, like owning your, you know, there's just the difference when we go through the hard times. And I think that's a, such a powerful reminder, what Shannon said about not having shame about walking that path. It's like, I, my heart breaks because I know that these, some of these girls who are being, um, they're impressionable to this influence. It, it's, um, it, maybe it's like that the, the wound is getting bigger <laughs> in order to heal. 
because it, it does harm. I mean, that is not, it's not going to be without a consequence. Consequence. Yeah. Huge consequence to the female aura. It's an yeah. unseen consequence, but it, it affects the, the psyche. It, it can drive you crazy. And, um, I and think, oh I do, I do think, I think it's going to continue. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's going to get deeper and deeper until everything's gone. It's already, the feminine energy is what creates the chaos on the planet. So it's yeah. that energy that's actually bringing the destabilization. The sexual energy of the planet sets the caliber and the feminine, the woman sets the caliber of the human race. And so these, <sighs> the women who are rising, yeah. it's, you have to know so much what you just said that to carry this and to not feel shame around it. There's times when we feel shame when we're really looking at things we participated in or what we carried, because there's always a little bit of our own free will that goes along. And then we have to look at the trauma that brought us to that place, mm -hmm. but to just really own it as a gift and then begin like day by day. And you and I both carry healing, deep healing and love, which is the, the archetype of the heart in intimacy, which is, so, <laughs> we get hit really deep. Like that, though, that's the deepest work right now to heal that. That is the healing, healing love relationships so that children can be born through healed love. And so we took it on. And it's not, a, I love remembering that it's not a bad thing. Whatever trauma we went through, whatever programming and conditioning we played out, whatever heartbreak and pain and low frequency that, you know, I'll speak for myself, like, you know, we talking about the collective feminine, we, the descent that we've gone through, um, the power that comes out of it. And, and I just love, it's like, I, I can sense and feel energetically. There's a difference when you become a mother, but you hold the wisdom through the experience and the transmutation. It's just the, the passing on is just different. You just pass on something different because it's that, that it's a holy, <laughs> it's just different. Yeah. Okay. There's a, well, you magnetize the womb to, mm. there's different dimensions of souls that can come in and um, yeah. And I love it. Oh, God. Yeah. Fertility I, I, is a big thing on my platform. And um, yes. Yeah, so the reason to hear the joys and the beauty of, you know, no, and it doesn't mean that souls, so some doesn't souls slip in through the lower frequencies because we do, we have to, yeah. but in the, to generate the energy of the new kingdom, the divine mm -hmm. kingdom, the divine feminine kingdom is mm -hmm. the healing of love and motherhood and the, the being of the, mm -hmm. the, the healed holy woman who's done wow. the alchemy. Yeah. And um, the word repentance was coming in too when we were talking about shame, and the, that was a, that's a newer word for me to work with that frequency. Um, but that has been such a powerful experience to work with because it's like when we can truly go to the bottom of the pain of and feel shame almost as like a cleansing frequency and just bask in it rather than resist it and run from it and be afraid of what it means about us but just let the darker frequencies move through our body that it, it, it's that renewal um and when I was talking to Jan, uh, Diana my mentor I was like so what do you do when you actually know you messed up and you did something wrong and she just said something that was really I think you'll love this. She just said, well, she's like, this is what I love because when you can, when you can master this, you really become bulletproof. When you can accept that you are going to make mistakes and take the wrong path and say the wrong things. And, and you may have shame, but you know how to work through those experiences where it doesn't take you down, but yeah. you go through that journey of forgiveness, um, forgiving self and being forget, allowing yourself to feel forgiven. I would love for you to talk into that. Um, yeah, that that's like that bulletproof power. I love that you use the word repentance. It is kind of a, in religious, a religious mm -hmm. terminology a bit or like biblical 
but I, I've come into that word recently too. And it's not anything I've used, um, in my work in earlier years. I don't think so. Not, not regularly, but, um, and I, I think, you know, this, but in the past few years, I've been kind of revisiting some of the platform that my, I was originally educated in, in the spiritual traditions mm -hmm. I grew up in. And that word is a big word, but it's, it is, um, repentance is a gift because you get to, you get to let it go. And it's the surrender. It's that surrender of forgiveness, which comes in the, the, the Christ religions that, to, to repent is to be forgiven and to repent is to acknowledge that you're aware of the energy. So you've, you receive the wisdom, mm -hmm. you get it. So, because it's like saying, I have the wisdom enough to know, I want to give this back to you. It's not mine to keep. I don't, it was a mistake or it was a misuse of my energy. And it's not from guilt. It's not from shame. It's a, it's, so empowering to just mm -hmm. repent at the, and I've been doing it at the end of every day, just kind of going through mm -hmm. and saying, I give it back to you. I give this energy back to you and keep going because it's just a gift. And I think I know for you too, it's so spiritually powerful because if you carry any kind of shame or self, um, you know, where you self too, too much of a self-critic or you have on the Virgo energy, meaning yeah. like to just be like, I can repent. Actually, that's doing the holy work. Like it's mm -hmm. part of the process, which makes it, I, I, it makes it so, so powerful that it's mm -hmm. a gift to us to repent, which just yeah. means looking and we all misstep every day. We, even in our, I've, I've been working a lot with our mind. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had a thought about someone and I catch it so quick of mm -hmm. judgment or anything, even that puts anyone in to just be like, that's harmful. It's harmful to my feminine energy. Wow. And so if I can see the wisdom and whatever needs to be learned instantly, let it go or then let it go and ask the wisdom to rise up and mm. show you after you've let it go. Wow. I love repentance. I love that me you said too. That. It's so powerful. It's, it is a newer word and, um, for me, and, but, um, it clears our friendships too, you know, yeah. Because we live in, I've been talking a lot about suspicion and that how suspicion generates this like feminine inner, you know, the dark forces. I've, I've been talking a lot about Lilith, but that's when we judge others and when we, we're living hate in our mind, it might feel powerful because the ego thinks like if I judge this and this and this, I, I'm I'm on a higher pedestal, but it's it's actually creating more bad entities in our subconscious mind. So repentance I believe it can build the friendships and the connections and the mm. true, the truth, the truth mm. between people, especially people you love oh, to know so that you can repent every day and start over. Yes. Clear the slip. It's, it's the true humility. It's very, it's accountability. It's like, person. it's, it's cleaning oh your side of the street in a way. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like organizing the energy. It's like, oh, that's an energy leak. Like I need to clean that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, there was something when you said crucifixion that came and it, it, it went away and I, I'm like, I'm just bringing that up, um, to see if it comes back, but, um, let's see. I said you, feminine crucifixion. Yeah, exactly. When you said that, yeah. Um, the sacrifice of self. Um, it's the sacrifice. Do you want me to say it a little yeah, bit about that? because we're doing the feminine work of that? And do you want to talk about the your course too? I think it's sure. I, we're doing that. That's the part of the theme of it. But so the female is cru. This is just the work of light body woman that the female is crucified on the astral level, and the astral level is the a, a level of the heart, and so we have this image of the outer crucifixion of the masculine. But we say the cross inside the heart is where the woman, because the woman is crucified through feelings and through love and through energy. It's And so it happens, the female, which is the counterpart to the physical, is happening in the heart. And it's where we learn, where we live, where it's where we have our superpower as the holy woman. Mm -hmm. It's the love that will heal the world. And it will be transmitted through the womb and through love and through work together in the world. So 
there's that. Um, it's a powerful word though. I almost just named the course that, and then I thought it might scare people. So <laughs> I have it. It says goddess ritual. Then it says feminine crucifixion, the holy descent, Avinana. And it's a, it's a literal crucifixion of the goddess. So the course is, um, are we, are we ready? Or do you have anything else you want to say that I should talk Maybe about? We can, we, you can talk about it and then. Okay. I'll talk about good. it and bring in some points that yeah. I'd written down. Yeah. Just some more. And then so, we can talk after on um, anything else that comes up. So there is this kind of great sexual deception that is that happens in the world where women are uh, there's this inner conflict on having had that energy repressed. Mm -hmm. It's almost like because it was repressed and and even in you know certain eras it was really really a woman was just um, used as either a breeder or um, you know she was the virgin or the opposite or the whore, mm -hmm. you know, so she could, had to be holy or this, or be in service. And so there was an aspect of understanding the physical body and the energy of, of that energy, that force, that, um, goddess force that runs mm -hmm. through her because it also runs through the heart and in love, there's a transmutation of having it just be physical to where it becomes spiritualized, the spiritualized feminine force. And so, you don't want to repress that and you don't want to diminish the power of the woman. And that's been done over and over. And we'll have Anya maybe talk about the archetype of what she found, which mm -hmm. was so disturbing. So this is part of, sometimes we talk about the agenda and by the agenda, I mean, I wrote this down mm -hmm. that the agenda. So you hear that used a lot and sometimes around like conspiracies, but if we were to say that there is an agenda with the incoming shadow side of this planet, it's the agenda to separate love from sexuality. Mm. So it's just a commodity, both are a commodity, and mm. to separate union or sexuality from fertility. So there's a complete breaking down meaning even conception, mm -hmm. that that is no longer associated with the goddess force that is attached to the heart. Mm -hmm. And so if there is an agenda, we see it happening. And so there's a constant, constant programming being beamed that love doesn't necessarily mean how you use your body. And we see that on all these popular podcasts right now. It's mm -hmm. as if it's nothing. It's so graphic and so like influencing so many young women that think it's cool or that think it's, and it's only to, to the um, self-sacrifice of their own pristine energy. And again, it doesn't mean that they're not going to experiment or have more than one boyfriend in their lifetime or, but the, the to act as if it's no big deal, that is 100% wrong. Every time a woman has intimacy she gives a certain percentage of that vital energy we talked about, and it's not returned to her. Mm. There's not a reciprocal force. And so when a woman has had a lot of, that's why, like, I don't know if this is religious, but I have heard that women, I, it's, this is actually, I believe it's a psychological study that women, a man can handle more partners in his lifetime or more loves in his lifetime. The woman this reminds me of the conversation you and I were just having mm -hmm. about love or future love. Mm -hmm. Every time she gives it all, like she genuinely loves and her body is with that, mm -hmm. she's giving a very big piece of herself and her energy depletes sooner than the male. The man, just because of the biological breeding fact, was designed a little bit more hardier, but mm -hmm. to say he is less connected to the subconscious realms, we are like that because of our power. It's not a punishment. It's because the responsibility and accountability of woman to carry the holy energy on the planet was given as a privilege. And so we take a greater hit. And so after a certain amount of times you've fallen in love and, and it's been disrespected or discarded or, you know, disposed of, there, there's a knowing that you have to replenish and regenerate for yourself. 
And that's where, um, you know, that's where we also see things around age and around just the disposable woman. She's getting a little older. There's another one right behind her. This culture is pushing that. We say we we bow to that. And um, I say that without any bitterness. I say that as truth with a capital T. That is the archetype that we live under. And I, I, I know, I'm not sure if you've heard this recently, but we've just been talking. That is a collective fear that runs the the feminine wound, meaning like even before you know it, you know it as a woman, mm -hmm. meaning like even when you're young and you're dating, you already know that's there's certain and, and it can be used for wisdom, but it it's also runs the collective fear where women are just almost desperate to be cool or to be given or to be the one to be chosen. Yeah. Um, all of this is, all of these are, are oh, so I'll just say, I want to keep going with this conversation, but we're going to, in this course, we're going to be working, I work with esoteric feminine codes and also work with Kabbalah and some of the really deep, deep wisdom of the woman, the divine feminine coming in and rising. So it's going to be, it's going to be about the regeneration of this feminine energy body and just of holy womanhood. And that can be applied regardless of, you know, I have a background of growing up in a religion. And so I have respect for different religions. They're really important right now. And it's also really important for women to be a presence in them mm -hmm. because there is going to be a shift and a change. It doesn't, it's only if it's for you, but meaning if you're in one and you hold the truth, you're going to be used by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in the coming times. You will be your voice will be given the right time and place to speak the holy wisdom. And I put also, we did, we've, that part of the agenda, I'll say two more, devalue divine feminine energy, devalue it. It's no big deal. Whereas divine feminine energy is the most precious substance in the cosmos. It's, and children have it too. It is the most valuable energy. Anya teaches this really well, by the way. Um, and it's to deceive woman. The devil is deceiving the woman. And the devil can be is an archetype, but it's also a force that pulls on us through gravity to give herself fully to this program and to, to be accepted, to be loved and approved of. And her her grit and to and to be pulled into thinking that her greatest weakness is that she desires love. Mm. This is, I'm going to just say a couple things about this because I'm just remembering a book I read that had to do with kind of a far left doctrine around woman that goes back into like, I believe it's the fifties and sixties when there, when there was kind of this revolution, <laughs> my, my mm. microphone almost jumped out of my hand. <laughs> I'm like, <"What's> gonna... <laughs> uh, the serpent was coming up saying no. So um, this is also her power to unite with the divine. Okay. So I believe, and I believe you've expressed it too, that we feel like there's something wrong with us that we desire love mm -hmm. and that we desire that there's a really strong reciprocal connection when we come into a love relationship. Like there's this deep feeling like I must be desperate or mm -hmm. I don't deserve it or I'm too, it's too much for me to really want to have an, a love that's honored. And um, so this was pushed in some of these earlier writings that part of it was necessary, but like woman doesn't need anyone. She doesn't need a man and she doesn't, now it's, you don't need a man to have a child. It's mm -hmm. just the next iteration of that it's going to get more and more mm -hmm. um now you don't need it there was also a connecting from the female body meaning i'm not my body mm -hmm. i'm not my womb i'm not a woman because i have a womb and various different ideologies around that with which is complete ignorance of the feminine energy mm -hmm. so the power for woman to desire love is the power to unite with the divine it's that now there is such thing as I just saw you take that in. So I just wanted to take, yeah, your desire for love is the same as your desire for God. And 
we can, they are interchangeable. And yet sometimes when we're in a certain period of our life, we have to surrender the desire for physical love because if it's just not happening or we had to go through a period, but never let that transfer onto the divine to be really, you and I were talking about this. So you really are aligned and powerful and it will come because it's your desire to unite with the divine. And for any of these ideologies that try to separate, it doesn't mean you can't now the the early teachings of religion said like you could not be intimate with your partner unless it was for procreation. There's a balance there. It's there. You still in love relationships, you don't want to enter into addiction or love frequency or that's just needy, but there's also special energy exchanged between two people with that. That's And it's important to understand it. So you're not feeling shameful. And in the earlier times, it was more shameful. Yeah. Oh, there's so much. There's so much. <laughs> Can I go into a couple? Of yes, things? please. Okay. Um, well, this was, this was something that was coming in earlier, but like, again, going back to when we go through the wounds and the pain and we end up embodying the lessons, um, sometimes we can find ourselves, for example, like not having sex before marriage, um, that there's, please correct me if I, if I must speak here, but from experiencing the pain that comes when we give ourselves, even there, there's a setup in that, for example, like that dynamic of how um, that intention of that is for the protection of the feminine in, in many ways and the masculine, it's for the protection of both spiritually. Um, and, but it's interesting because that is, that idea is so far from mainstream culture at this point, so far, and yet it is, it is so, I think, necessary to really protect the woman. Um, the I woman am- is the planet. The woman is the planet. When she goes, it all goes. And we're teetering. Yeah. She's the caliber of the ener- the creative energy. And her consciousness determines the consciousness of the of the collective. And um, what did you just say? Oh, about giving yourself in marriage. Yeah. And and your stages also are being used exactly the way you were sent in to use them, which is a really big gift to the world. Meaning like we when we go through those things, it's to it's to really gain vision and clarity to be able to speak from knowing it on a cellular level. Mm-hmm. And so there is no judgment. I and um you said a bunch of things. Yeah. There. So another thing is um, when you said like we've been, we are bowing to that right now. And I don't remember exactly your words, but my mind jumped, it dropped in. Um, I wanted to say, and this might trigger some people, but we are bowing. What I experience, what I feel in the collective woman is we are bowing to man still in a very imbalanced improper way energetically and please again correct me if i'm wrong but on an energetic level that's what i see and feel is we are that desperation for love that desire for love the vulnerability we have because we want that makes us so um desperate in a way and we're bowing to man and that never catalyzes the divine masculine expression ever because we give the most potent essence we give it to the most impotent powers oh oh wow you just said that so well there's no real spiritual potency in the masculine no. And so we're giving it to the altar of ball. We're bowing at the lower, yes. the, the underworld that's bowing yes. to the devil. That's Diana exactly. says it's like, it's like, it's like being the queen and, and taking up, um, being in the bed chambers with the, um, the jester of the kingdom. Yeah. Not knowing who you are. And this, 
by the way, just, I don't know if you know this, but the course that I'm not sure if you've seen it yet is the queen of heaven and earth. That's mm -hmm. the title of it. Wow. So it's about that understanding what the, when you teach the queen, what the queen is mm -hmm. so that you can live it. It doesn't mean arrogance or not a human life. We came here to be human, but it means wisdom to, 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 to guide us down our path. Once we understand it, I wanted to say something about feminism and the left. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I've said, mentioned the left a couple of times. I want to say like I, in my last video, I just posted on my channel. Um, I critique the right and the left, but I'm just <laughs> kind of meaning like there's with technology and some of the things building right now, the tech, the tech industry is really going hard for certain reasons on the other side right now. We'll, we can maybe squeeze that in, but with the fem what feminine so i never actually got i was always on the spiritual path of the divine feminine wisdom so the feminist movement didn't appeal to me meaning i heard about it and i understood that there was reasons to stand up and i just i think i just intuitively know my spiritual path was that standing up mm -hmm. and 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 the voices i heard coming through not to put them down it was necessary there's certain people i really really respect it was necessary. It was part of the collective awakening. But it used to be when feminism started out, literally when I came online with Art of the Feminine, the, the videos going around about feminism were about, there was a video called Misrepresentation and it was a movie. And somebody on the left had made this, she owned this platform and this thing about mm -hmm. how women were, you know, used just for their body and how like everywhere you look, the feminine's being used. And I remember that caught on. It was kind of a thing because that was part of earlier feminism. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really wild to see how feminism did a total, is it a 180 when it goes the opposite direction? Did mm -hmm. now feminism is being, you know, a pleasure worker or having mm -hmm. an OnlyFans. Like that's, that is, everyone has got behind that now. I mean, I see it everywhere and it, even when I saw that podcast, I called you and I said, I said, I had to sit there for an hour. I was like, okay, I, and I'm not naive, but, and I know it was nice people. I'm not trying to put down the people, the women in their twenties, not at all, but because I'm so aware of the vibration and what, how, how minds, women's minds are very suggestible. Like we talked about, because we are super coded to want to be loved and seen. And so we're influ and we we also kind of know that certain other things kind of didn't work. Nowadays, a lot of women have seen the struggles of their parents. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, this 180 thing really, I think it's something that needs to really be looked at. I think I'm sure other people talk about it, how liberation went from being able to say, hey, women are being exploited to be saying like, you can't tell me that I can't sleep with 20 men in, on one set in one day to like be famous. I mean, I, even the New York times, I just saw an article in the New York times this morning with a woman who was on one of these sets and talking about how she went viral because of the particular garb she was wearing in this like act. She was sexual act. And I just thought we're really at this place. This is the New York Times. And obviously I know it's a very liberal paper. I just read it culturally because I was from New York. It's like more of a cultural connection. I enjoy some of the intellectual um, news that comes out of it and the arts and stuff. It's fun to keep up with it. But this is just common articles now that, oh, this young girl went viral because she was in a certain religious garb and made this video with all these people and, oh, we should need to talk about how wrong that is that she's being persecuted. I'm like, it's a complete inversion. It's just an inversion. And I recently, I try to not, I haven't allowed myself to look at, I just want to throw this in too. This just came in. I haven't, I've of course seen pornography. I know pornography, but I, at a very early age, and I wasn't even a consumer of it, but there, I never actually was, but there was a, a period when you're younger where you see it and it's a little more out there. Um, I realized, and it was around the time I was pregnant and that was going, my, my son now is a sophomore in college. So that's going back a ways. That's when you would get spammed on email. 
Now it's mostly you get spammed on social media or, but you would get sent porn. And so if you accidentally open something, you'd see the, you know, they'd try to hook you in that way. And when I, I realized, and then when I was carrying my son, I was like, oh, just those images, they sear into mm -hmm. your mind. They own you. If you allow yourself to take that in, that image has power inside you. You never get rid of those. Those images are so powerful that they, I can still remember images I saw back 20, 35 years ago, I want to say, because I'm older and it's not, it's been quite a while. I still remember some of those images that never left my mind. They're there. Mm -hmm. So our consciousness, this is how I talk to my son, how I've talked to him since he was very young. And now it's about only twice a year. I just check in and I just say, you know, your consciousness is the most valuable resource you have. It's your wealth. Don't ever give it to something that cares nothing for you because it will take away your power to be a man. And and then we, and then I'm on the lighter note, I'm like, you know, we joke around too. He's really mature. And I say, you know, obviously you're human. This isn't to, to say that it, it, that everything's a sin or bad or anything like that, but meaning like, know what you, who you give access to. And he knows it. He's like, oh yeah, I know. Because these days kids are being fed it from a young age on their devices. I mean, before they even hit puberty, they're already, I think it was, it was Billie Eilish who I don't follow that much, but she talked a lot about how she was raised on it and she didn't know the difference. She said, I didn't, when I came to the age of actually having partners, I didn't, I thought I had to be what I had seen. Have you ever seen that interview? Mm -mm. It's but pretty. That makes so much sense. I mean, that that's. She it's... said, I didn't know what love was. She said, I didn't know that people came together physically for love. She said, I didn't even, she said, I thought that when I came together with someone, it was because I had to perform. Like I had to do all the things I had been shown in the videos and that I had to keep doing it. She said, I didn't even understand it was about an exchange of love between two people. Isn't that wild? So sad. But that makes so much sense. I mean, it's just those frequencies. It's like, you don't actually know the true or frequencies until you experience them. And, but if they're, um, yeah. I okay. know. I, yeah, it's like, I think everyone just got that. <laughs> like, I'm going to say one last thing before you yeah. go. I think you're going to yeah. talk about your thing. Just know that love, because you talked about the alchemical chamber and love. And, and first of all, also, you said you didn't, you wanted me to correct you. I yeah. actually meant to say, I will never correct you on it. You know that like, I, we haven't seen each other in a while. So no, 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 it's not about that. I just wanted to, I, I'm correcting that meaning like you're, you're a fountain of pure wisdom and, mm -hmm. and you know, and you obviously honor that because what you speak is so valid. And even when we're contemplating things and we're not sure about them, mm -hmm. it's that ability to not feel blocked or censored mm -hmm. that lets us play with the ideas. And that's the, that's the part about woman not being censored to play with her ideas until she finds the voice that she lands on and says, that's it. No, that's, and that can certain things in my work. I spoke about this yesterday with my people that there's certain things I had to sit with for years and years and years. And I was like, is the answer going to come? Like, I know I don't, I have, and, and then when it comes, you're like, sometimes you sit with one thing for you're carrying it for the planet because then when it opens in you, you're beaming it into the whole world, one woman. And, um, oh, I wanted to just say this about love and then I'm finished is that, mm -hmm. and also the alchemical container of love is a chamber that can only be entered when you get in the window of that. And when there are people living in relationships, like let's say your parents and my parents are both still together, who have gone long-term relationships and been really devoted and honored their family and their commitment. And that also carries a really, really strong. The next level is just having a bit of spiritual wisdom about what's actually being exchanged and it doesn't even mean both people have to be deeply religious or spirit, but there's an energetic honoring. Like when we come together, this life we have is holy. Mm -hmm. It's a temple. We're the microcosm of the great, the great, the greater population mm -hmm. of spiritual people. Our home and our bed and our children are a microcosm of the whole universe, really. 
Yeah, I mean, I just, um, I just think about like what I've learned from, I've, I've learned this from you, oh, so many things. <laughs> I just want to say it's the, it's the uh, light body streaming that you were speaking of. And um, I like learned from Shannon Port when I took a, I took a course from her probably seven years ago. <laughs> um, but that was one thing I learned. Um, yeah, and I think it's like what I I do. I, I've learned to trust my. I've learned to trust the stream, not my stream. I've learned to trust yeah. the stream that that comes through. But sometimes I think, especially like in relation to you, I just there's so. I feel like sometimes my the intelligence that I carry perhaps is it's an energetic. Like I feel things. I feel the truth of things a lot. But it's just so incredible to be to relate to you and and to talk to you because you have the intelligent you can explain what I experience or sense or feel and it's so amazing to feel that union happen and I just I, I just like my whole system eats it up when I can finally understand something that I sense and you have this like way of you just know it like on an intellectual knowledge it, does that make sense and anyway I'm that's so ha well I'm so happy to, you know, that you receive it and to just remind you that the only reason I can speak the words here is because I'm sitting with you, not somebody else. Mm -hmm. And you know that, meaning I'm able to speak the stream mm -hmm. because the in this conversation, your vessel is capable of receiving it and holding it and digesting it. And so it's reciprocal. It goes both ways. You know, with someone else, I would not be having this conversation. And so that's how we, you know, we talk about how we've in this relationship, it's been so sacred for both of us because that you always came in immediately so <laughs> eager and ready and just ready to, this is your lifetime to just take it all in. And, um, and it's with time as a woman, woman is time. Mm -hmm. And so we move through time. We, with each experience you go through, you know the wisdom inside you, but you hold it, you claim it, you own it because of the, in the 10 years that you and I have known each other, what you've, the, your physic, your human life has landed the wisdom. It's growing and growing. And so I'm obviously older and, you know, it's a profound stream for sure, but it's a lot of learning and sacrifice had to come on the human level as well. But thank you. I'm so, uh, the fact that you receive it is always, it's the greatest gift. Like, you know, when you teach, when the students can, it, can receive it, you get, it's the same gift for the giver and the receiver. Mm -hmm. It's the teacher and the student and the student and the teacher, they just reverse. It exalts so. the divinity. It, that's what it, I think that's probably why it also feels the so what? Good. It what exalts do the divinity. Is yes. Better. Yeah, this pure <laughs> divinity in this conversation. We know each other's frequency, and I also know your level of respect and integrity, and just value. And so, this container is like so special. And the light's been on you the whole time. And, <laughs> and Ani is wearing red and black, which can be also considered. It can be seen as the devil, the you mm -hmm. know the the red devil and the. But in the holy woman, it's reclaiming the blood. The red is the blood. It's the solarization of the blood. It's the regeneration and spiritualizing of your life bloodstream. And that corresponds to both Inanna and Magdalene. So the red is, and it's the heart when you think about it too. It's like, so seeing you in red and black today, I love okay. it. Okay. I love it. There's a few things that I just have. I'm, I'm probably just going to like just talk for a moment because there's like a lot that is coming through and I want to, um, so one thing that's been coming in since the beginning is this purification that we go through, um, and the subconscious, something that I, this is like a tangible takeaway for listeners. Um, I've experienced this a while now with my cycle as a woman that the, the two, the, the, um, week before my moon, uh, and the week of my moon, when I'm bleeding, it's, it's an energetic, emotional detox before it that pms week that has been so messed with and demonized i have so deeply learned to appreciate and respect the the cleansing the external movement of energy that happens through my emotions that week and i notice and observe what is moving out because that tells me what what came in and also what was inside of me 
and that's a purification that happens that it was connected to something earlier and then also the physical purification um but oh the crazy woman that's definitely the times that i've labeled myself crazy <laughs> because sometimes that week can be very intense emotionally and and especially if i'm in a relationship with um you know in the past i've had experiences with a, with a romantic partner in that week where that's when a lot of the chaos comes up and I finally also accepted that a lot of this chaos is not mine. A lot of this chaos is what I've absorbed energetically from them and their DNA and their codes that I'm detoxing, clearing right now. And then also in this exchange of that's too much for that, you know, whatever, like, well, this, that I'm clean, clear, sorry, this is me getting a little bit, <laughs> but that's so powerful. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. So that's one thing I just want to land on that. Another, this is a, this is a, a less, oh yeah, go. Is it going to, are you, are you, are you going to switch to something totally different? Cause Not I'll, totally I, different. okay. Okay. So yeah. I'll write down what I'm going to say. Okay. Okay. Cause <laughs> what you're talking about is pure power, understanding your cycle and you know, but oh, you, you really it should so be teaching that at the highest level. So oh, it's, it's just, really I, powerful. I have one course on it, but I would love to talk. We need to do a course. But anyway, we'll talk. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> submit, um, oh yeah. So this was another lesson that I learned in romantic love and relationship is, and I think I would really love to hear what you have to say on this. Um, and it's connected because it's connected to what I just said in the sense of, well, it is, but so in the, in the feminine energy world, you know, we learn about receptivity, receiving from a man, um, leaning back, um, like this is kind of the more, let's say lighthearted, superficial feminine energy coaching that's out there. The divine feminine wisdom is, is different. It's, um, very different. Um, <laughs> and, but I have on a personal level tried to figure out how do I be a divine feminine woman? What does that, what does that mean in relation to a man in a romantic dynamic of submission, surrender, and trust when I follow and let him lead? What is that dynamic? And I'm just going to share the lesson and learning because I would love for you to speak on this, Shannon. Um, I had a big weight of realization it from a romantic experience where I realized that I was trying to trust this man. I was trying to follow him. Interesting, follow him. Um, and I was trying to, uh, you know, submit, surrender and give my heart because I, there's that part of me that like, I think that's what I'm supposed to do as a woman in a romantic relationship. But what I wasn't submitting to this is, this was so incredibly powerful. There were many times in that relationship where in order to submit to him, I had to deny the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And I wasn't actually surrendered and submitted to the guidance of, of the Holy Spirit. I was instead giving that power to this man. Um, and that it, it was such a big lesson because I, I guess it's just, I know surrender, um, you know, that intention that you talk about, that I hold the integrity, I learned that from you in your early teachings. I learned that um, we cannot have true power without humility. And I mean, just the smallest bit of impurity in our like intention can mess with so much um it can break down everything so anyway is, is that is that making sense now i'm kind of absolutely losing. it makes it makes so much yeah. sense so um i want to i'm just going to go through the things that I, I jotted a thing down so we can make sure to get them all so first of all your teaching around and your understanding of your cycle at that time the pms time that's when the collective wounds are active in your field mm -hmm. meaning you're it's like you're magnetic to what's around you but also in the collective and so they do come up that it's you're carrying the pain especially if you're a spiritual woman you the both the entities can attract magnetize to you you're carrying the wounds and so it's a time to 
to honor yourself and get clean. Your wounds will rise up and it will make, you know, some, sometimes it's yours, like you said, mm -hmm. but sometimes, you know, it's not. And the wounds of the relationship and the past of the relationship, because it's the blood of the relationship too, meaning it's the blood of woman and of the reproductive. It, it carries those codes between masculine and feminine. So that's really real. And then all the different mm -hmm. aspects of that monthly cycle. So, um, there's deep spiritual work and manifestation can be done during that time. You see it kind of a little bit more in a little bit more new age way, but this is a really deep, deep way, meaning it's, it is, um, it's, it's a prayerful way and it's, it's a real union with your own being and being in touch with your inner sub it's your subconscious too, because the, the menstrual cycle is from the subconscious realm as well. So you also, the relationship, so the woman, the saying is the woman is the caliber of the relationship, but it, what that means is that woman is the starting point, meaning when you make a shift, you oftentimes will notice how quickly it can change things. And also we hold the deep emotional energy. So the, the climate, the unseen climate in the air oftentimes is coming from the female emotions that e that either haven't been expressed yet or that are you know, either spiraling or building up inside. <laughs> so understanding your power is, is it for the relationship. And there are times to say, I've done my part and it's something's not working here. I'm curious. Of, oh, and then these are just some bullet points with the man. You talked about absorbing the woman, the magnetic field of the woman takes in the man's energy on a level that he does not take in the woman. And so you have to learn to be, um, to understand that the taking on or the even reading their emotions or judgment, because guys aren't perfect. And sometimes they'll be like, you know, shoot something out at you that's kind of painful. You So understand how deep you take in the program, because it is like the programming of the magician into the high priestess. It mm -hmm. shoots that seed right in the mental seed. And so you literally are absorbing, but also also in intimacy, multiply that by a thousand. When you are intimately connected with someone, I mean, what you take in, it's there for years and years. And so this is, you know, profoundly deep wisdom that not everyone's ready for and that not everyone needs at the moment. It will, there'll come a time when we'll just know that. And so that's real. The, the taking on and the and the just checking your arc field in love that's why woman is sacrificed because a woman carries the weight of the love the meaning when two people come together though it's a little more weighted in her i'm talking you know energetically on the esoteric levels right now so in the same way with child you know giving childbirth she carries it and so it's just the role of the spiritual role of the feminine to begin to understand these things and the other thing about the man leading, oh, and you, okay. So yeah, surrender. I know that was big in your generation. Like you guys mm -hmm. really talk about surrendering to the man and the feminine, <laughs> masculine, feminine dynamic. And I know there's been a lot of times I've seen this when it was really, really going strong and thinking, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's like all these women are like, I surrender to my man. And he feels <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. And it is important. It is for important for a man to know that you trust him and that he can be a man. I just mm -hmm. talked about this in my last video, but I just want to give an example right now, all the guy podcasters, how they're all kind of like rock stars. And there's like all these guy bot podcasters that are super famous you know, they, they really have grown and they kind of represent to me, I don't mean this negatively, but this new sort of rock star generation of guys mm -hmm. that hasn't done their feminine integration. Many of them haven't been in or are in a real relationship, mm -hmm. meaning they're getting masculine glory I hope this is received properly because the because a lot a lot of them are great, but that archetype is still that it's kind of like the bro guys like but we can the women oh because they become like they get groupies and the women just keep getting younger and younger as they age, and it's just the same it's it's the pet programming, 
Do you know what I mean? And they're talking as if they're experts on everything and talking yeah. to the experts and they're glorified in the culture. They're the new it, all of it. But it's very rare that I see someone and hear someone who's been emotionally um, awakened, spiritually has sacrificed in love. And there's just the parties and the women and the being no the fame, money and power. And that archetype is still real. And a lot of times it's mixed even with like doing substances, like uh, and a lot of that. But then being super, super healthy, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah, totally it's a bizarre mix. Well, and so I don't mean to put it down because a lot of them are on the path of wanting to awaken, but, yeah. and then the women podcasts that we see out there are mostly like the sexual playing to it. Yeah. I becoming the source of our own exploitation. Oh, well said. <laughs> well um, said. I oh, think... I wanted to ask you, oh, sorry, about the voice of the Holy Spirit. Like when you uh-huh. hear it, I didn't understand like what an example of that might be. And then that's it. Oh, I just had... in my body. Oh, I, oh yeah, that's a good, that's a sorry. Like about what kind of, do you, if, is there any example? Uh, you don't have to go personal. That's, yeah, I can do a very simple example. For me, I finally realized that like that, the, it's really like the, um, the language of the, the voice of the emotions the language of the body, like the emotional body, I think. And, um, well, and again, see, this is where I want to say, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like, I, this is where I'm currently at. This is how I'll say it. This is where I'm currently at in my relationship with like that guidance is, and like the goddess energy of, of, um, the emotional, it's learning to trust my emotions, whether they're very intense and crazy or they're calm and peaceful, there's guidance in, in all of that. And I've, when I, I had, I've, I just, I guess labeled that, like I'm using the Holy Spirit to describe this guidance that I finally have accepted. I have access to in every moment. And for me as a woman, it comes through sensations and feelings and um, it's an internal guidance for me, at least right now. And I, again, I, this is just where I'm currently at. I've just kind of been making these links and, but you know, if I'm, if I'm angry, like it, it's like the Holy spirit is guiding me by the sensation of peace. This is like, this is the way, or if there's pain, discomfort, lockdown, emotional stuff, that's not, that's also the Holy spirit saying, this is not the way there's yeah. something to clear out of this to transmute um to let go of to say no to like all of it is guidance i guess and i've just been using that term the holy spirit so amazing and so then that you you bypass that voice in order to do what the guy wants yes the man yeah yeah got it that's calm yeah yes of like this doesn't feel good this doesn't feel good (laughs) something feels off some you know again it's like that same voice that i was bypassing in that first relationship a long time ago yeah so it's just, I guess it's like, um, my personal journey is, um, in love. It's do, what am I truly following? Like, is it that internal guidance that is connected to the divine or is it, am I ignoring that just to have love, you know, um, does that make sense? Yeah. There's different layers to the question. Let's start with the first one. The first one is that relationships are holy and they're containers of alchemy. And so you do have a a, a path that you come in with. Mm -hmm. We could call it karma, but it's like things inside you that are going to bring in certain experiences, especially if you're on the path of love that will hold gifts, even if they're very uncomfortable. There is a time when that is valid. Uh, you know, there's sometimes when, you know, I look back and as you go through them, you look back and be like, wow, I am a different person. I fought this all the way I thought I was, but that experience forever healed. That door is shut and I'm ne- it's never opening again. And that's the gift of love. That's profound mm-hmm. at the same time. Um, you know, if you're in a committed relationship, it's a little bit different than if you're just in a casual dating. When you're in a casual dating, you should be fun, but have all the boundaries in the world and trust every single thing you feel if it's Mm -hmm. casual. Once there's a commitment that you know, it's a healing container. So Mm -hmm. there will be times when you have an impulse or a feeling that is the Holy Spirit, but attached to it may be part of 
the addiction to the emotional drama, meaning like, cause we carry that too as feminine, that became the high. It's like the inversion that we're seeing right now with going from in feminism to saying like, oh, we need to stop exploiting women and women need to, to, to oh no, exploit yourself. That's liberation. It's the difference that, that we, we become addicted to the lower side. Mm-hmm. And so there's a little bit, a little bit, this is not to not trust your emotions, but I think you'll get this mm-hmm. because that addiction can transfer onto everything. Oftentimes it's the same addiction that shows up, whether it's in materialism or shopping or needing people to look at us or, mm-hmm. you know, a substance or sexuality itself. It, 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 it's an archetype where addiction and pleasure, this is what we call, and we're going to be working with the desire body in the upcoming course. These are, it's like light body yoga principles, but through Inanna, the desire body is, is ravaged and used by the shadow forces. So in that state, emotional trauma is a bit of an addiction, meaning you don't realize it, but you have to keep feeding that bo- the body of pain because wow. every time you experience the emotional breakdown, it gets some food. Mm -hmm. However, it's so, this is where the wisdom comes in. As you said, emotions are the language of the goddess though. So it's not in any way, if the emotion comes, you have to honor it. Mm -hmm. And then maybe a little bit of sitting with it. It does take some life experience and spiritual wisdom to start to get really Mm -hmm. clear. And I promise you it happens it comes and, but within relationships too, you're both there to grow. I just was working with someone in the video I just posted where we were talking, she was like, we're so different. And sometimes I get triggered about the guy. There's times we have to let, there's times we say, you know what, you get this one and I'm just going to let it go. Or do you know what I mean? I, I really, and there's, then there's times when you come in and say, I understand that you're, you bring these gifts and I value them right now. I'm in a space where I'm going to ask you to come in to really hear me from my sensitivity and what's happening. I'm just using that as an example that sometimes you say, no, this time we need to do this because it's not letting me go. Or I need to tell you, it doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we say, okay, I'm going to because it's kind of a balance of, it doesn't mean that you won't be true to your alignment at all times, but sometimes your alignment is deciding that you're going to do, then you're empowered. Like I've decided that I'm going to, okay, he wants to talk later. I want to talk now. I'm going to give him this one, whatever the situation is and know that I'm going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Like just, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. There's more, there's more. It's not always just like, the pure Holy Spirit, <laughs> like guided, like sometimes our wounds are a part of it that we, we do carry them. I mean, we just do trust me. There's so many times I thought I I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> this is it. I'm done. And then the, that's where the humility and repentance is super valuable totally. because totally. you do get it. And, um, is there any other bigger example with not listening to your, um, well, I almost want to just go into one other. Okay. Okay. I have to go. The I know we've been, I know me too. We've been on so long. like, we could do another video. Maybe we'll talk, we'll have a conversation about that and like separate. And then we could do another. I video. know. I hope people can watch this because it's so long, but it's so oh, people will, I know they yeah. will. It's so powerful. Um, so one last thing that I really want us to talk about is the, is the, is that, um, the, the helmet thing. So I sent this photo to, to Shannon last night and it had just popped up. Um, it's, um, I have to just pull it up really quick. The, uh, a metal plate, the scolds bridal, the scolds bridal device used to publicly humiliate and silence women. So it's, um, I think I'm, I think that was a great idea to put that picture as the thumbnail of this. It's just so powerful. Wow. I mean, Goosebumps. so powerful and so they would use it to um, push down their tongue, which is symbolics of sexual or sexual organs. I've learned that from Shannon um, and prevent us from speaking. And it was a, it was a force to um, placed on women considered troublesome and effectively force them into silence. So there's a couple things that you'll see the photo on the thumbnail. (laughs) 
and I just want, I would love to hear what you have to say, Shannon, but all I wanted to say on this really quick is there's just an irony because what I have also discovered, and again, I want to hear what I would love to learn from you in this, but sometimes what I've experienced is the most powerful move to make in communication with the world as a woman is silence and removal of my energy. Um, and it, I, the reason I'm saying that is there's an irony in it because when, I don't know. Okay. I'm just gonna be authentic and like, just let it flow and just trust. So there's a quote that I read somewhere and it was like, the men don't listen to you um pestering them or nagging them they hear no contact <laughs> like they hear the no contact they hear the, the pulling away and i don't think that that's the divine feminine wisdom but there is there is something to the removal of our presence and our energy and our voice and it's like when we're gone that that speaks louder than anything and i'm bringing that up because it's almost like a flipping of shame, yeah. <laughs> shipping, flipping of shame of like, I don't know if anyone can see that, but our, the absence of our voice, the absence of our energy is death. Um, yeah. Well, it's actually death to the world. If it goes, uh, like if it goes all yeah. the way but not giving, no longer giving our energy or a fight to the thing, you know, in a certain way. It's silence with a capital S, which is the Holy Spirit's power and versus being silenced. Yes. When you silence with the Holy Spirit is the ultimate power of the feminine. And yeah, thank you for sharing that. I agree. And yeah. <laughs> yeah oh when you sent me that I we because you and I had been talking about just the this, what we're seeing in popular culture and just the world and I couldn't believe it I couldn't believe that image came to you I mean it you're, you you are kind of like a high priestess that manifests those things so the <laughs> fact that it came right to you Anya this um I don't know if I'm looking in the camera Anya had received this image just right after our conversation that just came through her feed. I wanted to say, so in my work, I've been talking about um, a book called The Hammer of Witches. There's a book called Witches, Her Heretics, Witches, and Midwives, which has to do with, I read this a while back, but it was just about how women were removed from the medical system as having any say in it. Like mm. there used to be midwives and women that were, and mm. they were reduced to only be nurses. It's a, it's, it's more of an academic kind of feminist thing, but it right, it right on gives the information of how the healing powers of women and the contact of women for healing and having intuition on all of this started to be um, diminished. And then there's, there's, there's just a reading list. I've been going through this summer, just not because I don't, my, it's not my energy to be hardcore in this stuff about, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's kind of like, but understanding it and remembering it and see, and they used to do lobotomies too. A lot mm -hmm. of women were seen as being hysterical. Just mm -hmm. think about it. Think of how you and I have got to live through our emotional body. Back then, there were some very famous people who had children and taken in to have that. And I mean, now we're doing another form of it. There's other things that are happening right now that go 100% against the sacred goddess energy. So that silencing, the fact that you came, that came to you, that is, it's real. And also the tongue. Yeah. Well, first the tongue is the, is actually connected to the Christ force through the spine. It's mm -hmm. the highest potent and it's the logos and the word and the ultimate silencing of the goddess and the holy feminine, the ultimate torture. And I know you and I both for a while were watching all those like period pieces like rain and in all the mm -hmm. ones that were, and I, I just couldn't believe how often Queens were beheaded and how often their Kings, their husbands, the father of their children just had this chain of mistresses coming nonstop. 
Like, what would it be like to live? I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. and they had to be silenced. And if they acted out, done. <laughs> but that, that, that archetype is alive today. And that's why Anya and I wanted to come together today to have this conversation. We were like, let's talk about holy womanhood and what this work is about. And so it's been such a, 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 a I mean, beyond anything I could put into words to get to have this conversation mm -hmm. with you. And, um, I'll just say, I do have this course coming up and it starts, I'll tell you the sacredness of it. It's about the death and regeneration of the feminine energy body. It, the archetype is Inanna, but it's about how she starts as the solar queen of heaven, which is also an archetype for the Virgin Mary and for the really holy divine feminine, and then loses her powers as she comes in mm -hmm. and then goes through a certain process. We're going to be applying the highest wisdom to regenerate that and to rise. It is the process we're we're in right now with women, but we're mm. just getting started. What's happening in the next few months and few years, things are going to get more chaotic. There's a transit of, of the North Node into Pisces, which is going to bring up the dark feminine and the deeply disturbing things that we've talked about today. And so the true reclaiming of the crone, the mature feminine and the dark feminine, which is you're wearing the colors, is what this is about on the highest, highest level, because those who walk with this internal silence, like you said, the mm -hmm. deepest, darkest presence, it's the presence of the Holy Spirit out of which all things are birthed, will be healers and teachers and revealers and wives and mothers and all the holy archetypes in this coming era. And so, um, Thank you for having me on to talk about it. I'm oh, I wanted to say one last thing. It starts yeah. on the goddess Celtic holy day, Samhain. So Samhain is October 31st. It's like it's on Halloween. And you might hear in kind of the alternative world that it's also sometimes used as the dark, but the original meaning on the on the calendar of Samhain is the regeneration of the goddess. And so we meet for the first time on Samhain, October 31st, and then November 1st, it starts All Saints Day, which is the honoring of the of life and beauty. But we're going to that season is the rich death and regeneration. It goes eight Fridays from um, November 1st, eight Fridays, and it ends on winter solstice Eve. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That's the whole thing. And, um, and I'll give Anya a link for that. So powerful. Yes, I highly recommend doing this course with Shannon. Um, and I think there's a chance Anya might do it. We're not, we're, we're seeing if the time yeah. works, but I hope you are in it. Yeah. I feel really called to study again, just in a, like a, um, structured way with Shannon. So thank you so much for being here and this, oh my gosh, this is my favorite hours <laughs> of my life. No, I mean, just truly, there's so much power that comes through in being in your presence and um such an honor so thank you for being here same here same oh, honor gosh. pure love and we prayed and tuned in before we had like a really nice tune in thank you anya thank you so much thank you everyone